let's talk fighting fish. So the thing that I really wanted to talk about when fighting fish is what happens when most people lose fish and why this happens, especially from shore. This is a very important part of surf casting. And the thing of surf casting that is really, really difficult is landing these really big fish or any big fish from shore where you're bringing the fish into the structure. So how do you navigate that fish around anything, any obstructions in the water to get them up and in without them cutting you off? And that is a very hard task to do and it's extremely difficult when you're just starting out because you don't have as much experience doing it. It is very unfortunate because a lot of the time when you start out, you lose a lot of those first fish that you catch. I mean, it's part of the learning process, but the more and more that you fish, the less and less fish you'll lose. And that is the thing that's probably the most frustrating as a surf caster or one of the most frustrating things. And uh, when I first started out, I lost a lot of fish, a lot of really big fish. When I hooked some of the first really big fish I ever hooked, I lost a couple of them. And then once I started fighting more big fish, the more that I fought those big fish, the less and less fish I'd lost. And then I really cut it out to the point that like, I haven't lost a fish in probably three years due to something that I did, like it cutting me off. And I've caught, not to brag, but I feel like I have to say that like I've caught dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of big fish from that are 40 plus inch fish the past four or five years and I've been very I have a very low breaking off rate on those fish and generally when I do break off it's because I've had some sort of gear fa failure and that happens a fair amount but not a crazy amount because you dial things in but that's again like a, a little part of it so my progression when it came to fighting fish I always thought what you really want to do is you want to have the heaviest gear possible and you want to be able to hook into the biggest fish possible with the heaviest gear possible. And that is a great way to land fish. And I had done a lot of that, but it was to the detriment of me being able to hook some fish in certain scenarios. If there's big surf and uh, the bass are feeding aggressively, it doesn't matter what you're throwing as far as gear. If it's really heavy, it's not gonna really impede the like action of certain plugs that you throw on huge surf. And the bass will still eat it and it's not an issue. But if you're trying to fish something that's very subtle and try to get those bass to eat stuff that's not uh, like huge and like can overpower a very heavy line, then it becomes a big issue and you end up losing and as losing as in like you end up hooking less big fish so that was a thing that i noticed early on when fishing heavy gear that i was hooking into not as many big fish as i probably should have been so after talking to a lot of guys that i really respect who fish a lot of lighter gear it's also very uh, uh location dependent too i fish on cape ann i think that the majority of guys that fish on cape ann are fishing super light and I don't really know why that is uh, other than the fact that you know we've adopted a technique to fishing in really really sketchy areas in probably the, some of the worst places to land fish and it's almost counterintuitive to what you'd believe it's one of those things that most people that fish in certain scenarios where there are structure are gonna say okay I want to get that fish up and out of that structure as fast as possible but what if you hook a striped bass that you can't turn? If that fish brings you into structure and your line is super tight because your drag is set really tight, I don't care if you're fishing 80 or 100 pound braided line, it's gonna snap on a sharp rock. And uh, especially when it's under that much tension. And that was something that we had to deal with a lot here. And I'm saying we as a general term because this has been something that over the years of people fishing and figuring out how the best ways to land these bass in our location are, uh, they figured out this way of fishing that I think is very unique to our spot specific, but could be utilized in other places and potentially get you guys to land more fish. And I think it's very interesting because it is such a unique way of fighting fish that uh, comparatively to a lot of other surf casters that are out there that I think that it would be interesting for people to try out this technique if you're in places like New York, New Jersey, places that have some good structure that those fish can cut you off on. So back to like the actual fighting the fish. 
Uh, what we like to do here is fish lighter gear. I'm fishing personally a nine foot rod and a 150 size fan stall or a 100 size fan stall generally. And when I hook into a really big fish, I don't care what structure I'm fishing, super shark, jagged rocks, anything like that. I'm gonna let that fish run. And I know that if that fish gets me into structure, my drag is gonna be light enough that I can loosen up and no matter how sharp that structure is, if I loosen my drag up, as long as I maintain some tension to the fish, most likely the hooks won't pull, but I'll have a better chance at that line rubbing against rocks and not breaking and maintaining tension to the fish than I would trying to horse that fish out of that structure with a really heavy gear, with really heavy gear. And uh, when you horse a big fish and you're trying to get them up and out of really like jagged rocks and crazy rock structure, it, it never really ends well, where I've had many scenarios it, where I fish really light gear and those bass were rubbing on rocks. And it almost happens every single time I hook a really, really big fish in shallow boulder fields, you're gonna have that bass get you into some sort of rocks. And I have not lost a fish a long time because I was quick to loosen up and let that fish rub me against the rocks. Even though these rocks were sharp, when I got my line back, because I loosened up enough, my line wasn't even that frayed or rubbed at all. It, in fact, it looked fairly normal. I should say that I use Power Pro Max Quattro line, and the line that I was using seemed to hold up really well against rubbing against rocks. So I think that as far as line goes, that's a really good line to try out if you're having issues with your line getting either fluffy because it gets waterlogged or if the line is rubbing against rocks and getting fluffy that way. Uh, I think it really stays together and stays tight. Uh, uh, the line itself will stay tight uh, when you have, when you're fishing that line and I've had really good success with it. And uh, again, rubbing against rocks like that, I've had no issues with fish breaking me off. And on top of that, you tire that fish out so then when you can get it in close to the rock, another time when a lot of the time you'll lose your fish because they'll dive right in close because they know you're about to pull them out of the water and they can see that the structure is getting closer to them. So once, <clears throat> excuse me, once they see that, <clears throat> one moment, excuse me. Uh, so once they see that rock, uh, they're gonna know that okay, my structures the structures coming in to me, so I need to uh, Run and that's what they're kind of seeing and uh, That's when a lot of fish are lost So it's a very important time in the fight that if you've already tired that fish out when it's out in some water that that bass can run and release some of its energy by the time you get it in you're most likely gonna be able to control that fish uh, how you want to control the fish and that being said, even the weight of the fish can uh, be very problematic if there's waves because that weight of that fish getting washed around is enough to cut you off if you're too aggressive on landing that fish. The other thing that it saves is when you're fishing lighter drag, which is basically what I'm trying to say is I like to fish lighter gear and lighter drag. So when you're fishing lighter drag, your hooks won't bend as often and uh, that also is a big major thing when it comes to not losing fish. And the other thing that doesn't happen as often is gear failure, like split rings or anything like that breaking or like anglers clips or whatever you're using won't bend or break as often when you're using lighter drag. And that being said, I am using pretty heavy drag as far as uh, like I'm landing my big bass, like anything that's 30 plus pounds, I am still landing in under like five minutes. I'm getting that bass in pretty quick, no matter where it is and what current and anything, I'm getting that bass in in under five minutes for sure. And uh, that is still a possibility. And I'm fishing 30 pound braid and able to present a lure. I can fish a rebel jumping minnow with my heavy, heavy setup where I'm fishing 40 pound fluorocarbon leader. I use blue label cigar fluorocarbon for those of you who are interested. And I have 30 pound max quattro braid, mainline braid. And I'm fishing a rebel jumping minnow, which is a tiny little spook, which most of the time you're fishing heavy gear. You can't even fish that. I can fish that with my heavy setup and I've caught 45 inch bass on it off the rocks. And I've been able to keep those 204 X strong VMCs that I have on it 
from bending because I'm using light enough drag. So you're able to present lures like that, which those bass, otherwise I would never have been able to catch because they were feeding on really small bait and they're being really picky. I would have never been able to hook those fish if it wasn't for the fact that I'm using such light gear. And uh, that I think is one of those things that is so important when you're fishing light gear. And then I always talk about like, there's th generally three good runs a bass will give you. When you hook into that fish, it's gonna go off on one first major run. Then you're gonna turn it and you might get, get like three or four good cranks and turn that fish. And then it's gonna take you on another run. And then the last run it will do is generally when you get it up close to the rock. Once you get that fish up and you're about to bring it in, there's gonna be one more run that it will do, which will be a much shorter run, but still it's a dangerous run and they can break you off at that point. And every single time it runs, you just have to stay calm and stay tight to the fish. You don't wanna drop the tip of your rod ever when you're reeling. Always reel your rod down and then pull up. And if you're gonna be fishing like that, Honestly, a lot of the time you just want to reel straight if you can, even though it might feel awkward and not feel as cool to do when you're like, instead of like really horsing that fish in and getting that fish up and in, if you just reel straight, you won't lose tension to that fish and you'll probably maintain the most even tension, which will keep that hook pinned in its mouth, not tear or rip anything on that fish or give it any unnecessary pressure to bend or break off on you. So definitely reeling even and making sure that when you're fighting that fish, you're staying really calm. When it runs, let it run. It's gonna stop running. It's a striped bass, it's not, I mean, it depends on what you're fishing for, but in my case, it's a striped bass. It's not going to run and spool you. That's not how they, they work. If you have some sort of drag on the fish, it will tire out eventually and you will be able to turn it. So you always have to just take a deep breath, let it run, that's what the reel and the rod is designed to do, and let the reel and the rod do the work. Slowly bring that fish up, slowly bring that fish in, and when it runs, just let them run, and then get them up and in, and just think, like, enjoy it. Always think, like, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, instead of freaking yourself out, being like, oh my god, this is a big fish, what if I lose the fish? Because once you start going down that spiral, you end up making mistakes, and you will end up losing that fish. Where, if you're more confident in your, your, focused on being like, I'm in the moment, I'm having fun landing this big fish, I fought thousands of schoolies before in the past and now I hooked a big fish, I'm just gonna play this cool, I'm gonna play this calm, and I'm gonna make sure I know what structure's out in front of me because I can steer that fish if it's running towards it. So how do you steer a fish? I've always found, depending on if the fish is hooked mainly right in the mouth, if it's hooked on the side, it's gonna be more difficult to turn, but you can still do it by pointing the rod tip in the direction that that fish is going. And what that's gonna do is put pressure on the side of the mouth that that fish is running, and it's gonna to try to pull away from where it's getting the pressure from, and that will make that fish turn and go the other direction. The other thing you can do if it's hooked on the belly or in the side, and you're really trying to get that fish to turn, is you can, if you know very well how strong your line and gear is in the fish hasn't brought you into a lot of structure yet and you know it's going to bring you into something that you might not have a chance of getting it out of, you can really, once it's stopped running and maybe just slowly sitting there and maybe like turning into the structure, not when it's running, but when it's just kind of slowly swimming or turning into the structure, you can grab your spool and you can kind of thumb your spool a little bit, just applying a little more pressure than the drag and try to pull up and turn the head or the body of that fish. That's a little bit of a more sketchy scenario, but that's gonna be my last ditch effort if I know that fish is going into some structure that it could cut me off. If the fish is running, like the drag is running, I'm gonna let that fish run out into the structure because if I try to put more pressure on it while it's running, you're gonna break off or lose it and pull hooks, do something bad like that. But if it's just slowly swimming into, the, into a bad zone, you might be able to slowly apply more pressure to it and really lift up hard and get it to turn, but everything is slow. You don't wanna do it quickly because you're gonna yank too much pressure and everything's gotta be smooth when you're trying to uh, turn a fish like that. That's where everything kind of comes down to this like, you gotta be relaxed, you gotta be calm, and every movement you do has to be slow and smooth and calculated because when you start doing things out of just reacting to what's going on, that's when you're gonna lose fish. You gotta really think through what you're doing. Uh, and yeah, maybe it's not as fun as just a freaking out, like, oh, I hooked a giant fish, 
But uh, when it's in bad structure like that, that's one of the main things that you have to do to really land those fish. Take a deep breath, stay, stay calm, and let that fish run. And the rest should work itself out. The other thing you really want to do when you're fighting a big fish is know where you're going to land the fish. This is the last main part of this. I have put out a few videos recently where I had one fish in particular where I was trying to land it and it was a sketchy spot to land it and a big wave came and it hit me. The fish was wrapped around my foot. I somehow unwrapped my foot and somehow landed that fish when I had no means in landing that fish. And uh, it was because I wasn't fully expecting to uh, hook a really big fish. Although I, in my mind I was like, I can, I can land a fish here. There are swells coming, but I should be able to land this fish right here. I know I could have brought it behind me, which is what I ended up doing, bringing it around the rock behind me, using the rock to block some of the surf and get that fish in. The other thing you really want to be careful of is when you're bringing a fish in, is there any rocks exposed or anything that it can cut you off that's exposed to where you're bleeding that fish? Because that's going to be a place where you might potentially lose a bass and that's the worst feeling. Losing a bass, especially when you should be just about landing that fish or you basically have already landed that fish and then you end up losing it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.